Hello and welcome to the fifth video in this series programming a JavaScript chess engine in GUI. So in this video we're going to continue with some of our definitions and we're going to start with the board. I've added a new file called board.js into the JS folder and you can see here that I've changed index.html to include this. I've put this below defs.h but above main.js. So looking at our board we're going to represent our board in a global variable called game board. And in here we're going to try and represent everything that we need to maintain to understand the state of our current position on the board. Some of it more complicated than others and we'll stick in this video to the simpler parts. So if we think about our game board, the first thing we can think is that we're going to need to maintain the state of our pieces on the board. If I bring up the GUI of the app itself here, then these are the 64 internal squares represented here on the board. And you know now that from our defs that we have an integer representing each of the piece types and a zero representing the empty squares. Well, we need an array or something to reflect this piece status inside our game board. So that's exactly what we'll do. We'll make a new array and we'll set this to 120 squares board square num. The next thing we need to do is we need obviously to hold the side and we'll set that now for color.white. It doesn't really matter what we initialize these two at the start because everything gets refreshed when we actually set up a position or each time we set up a position. And now we're going to move into the first, not complicated, but maybe slightly unknown thing for you, it's something called the 50 move. If you're familiar with chess then you'll know what this is, but if you're not I'll just quickly explain. The 50 move rule in chess states that a player can claim a draw if both players have made 50 moves and there has not been a pawn move or a capture. What that means in terms of the program is every time a move is made, either black or white, we increment 50 move by 1. And if 50 move ever hits 100, then the game is drawn. And 50 move gets reset to zero every time a pawn is moved or a capture is made. So we need to store this 50 move counter in our position so that we know when the game is drawn due to the 50 move rule. The next thing we're going to have is something called hisply. And this will maintain a count of all of the half moves, a half move being a move for either side, a full move would be a move for white and a move for black. It maintains a count of every move made in the game from the start. And this will be used to index an array which we'll be putting in later into the game board which maintains a stack of information which we can use along with this as an index to be able to take back moves in the position. The next one we'll put in is very similar but it's called play and what play is it's the number of half moves made in the search tree. So say the game is at his play 40 so 20 moves would be made by each side. Play, well, if play was at 6 that would actually be 46 moves in total but we would be 6 moves into the search tree because the search tree obviously does lots of doing and undoing of moves and we keep track of where we are in the tree using this play. And that'll also be used as an indexing for generating the moves for a position which will be seen quite a bit later on. And the last one I wanted to discuss in this video is something called the castle permission. And we'll call this castle perm. And the thing about the castling, I'll just bring this back up here, is if I just try and edit this position up the top here a little bit. So I'll put a three in in here and sorry a two in there and a two in there and set this position. Oh, that should be a three sorry and set the position. Okay. In terms of black here we've got permission at the moment in this position to castle either I'll set black to move We've got permission to castle either from here to here or from here to here. The first one was what's known as queenside castling. The second is known as kingside. So queenside goes to here and kingside castling goes to here. 
but you, ha but you can only castle if the king and the rook are on their starting squares and have never moved. There are also some other rules which we'll see later, like you can't castle across squares that are attacked by the opponent, but you need to keep track in the game of what the current permissions are. In the position string, which we'll also be covering in a couple of videos' time here, we're saying that white has permission to castle king and queen side in this position, and so does black. If I took these two permissions out and set this position, and now tried to make this move, it doesn't let me do it because black doesn't have permission to castle. So we need some way in our in our game board of keeping track of what the castling permission is. And the way we're going to do this is simply with one integer. And before I explain how that integer works. I'm going to go into defs and add in a couple more definitions here. And I'll add them in below the colors. And they're going to be called a castle bit. And we've got white king side castling is 1, queen side is 2, black is 4, black king is 4, sorry, and black queen side is 8. And I'm sure it's now becoming relatively clear how we store the castle permission. So if I just make some space for some comments. We take the rightmost bit as the least significant, which means white king castling is this bit, and then white queen side castling is this, black king side castling is this, and black queen side castling is this, viewing it as in binary. So this is the 16, sorry, 8, this is the 4 here, this is the 2, and this is the 1. Which means if we had a, a, a number that, say, looked like this, so 13, well, that would actually tell us, if we did a bitwise and, that white can castle king side, can't castle queen side, black can castle king side, and black can castle queen side. And now, say black moved a rook, so he lost his castling permission on the queen side, we would then have a 0, 1, 0, 1, which would tell us now that white can do king side, can't do queen side, black can do king side, and can't do queen side. So maintaining this just in castle permission, just in one integer, we can then use a bitwise and to know whether the permission is there. Uh, just to check, if you, I, I assume you know what I mean by bitwise and, but essentially what I mean is if we go back to the bits here, I've got the white castle bit, which is one. If I wanted to say then from this permission here, can white castle king side, I would say if this and white king castle is not equal to zero, then we know that white can castle king side. So that's simply how that'll work, and it's quite a simple way to store the four castling permissions. Okay then, so that's it then for this video, because I've gone on long enough. I like to keep them between around 7 and 10 minutes. In the next video we'll carry on setting up our game board and move on to looking at how we store the location of the pieces in some piece lists to make the generation evaluation of the position a little bit more efficient than just simply looping through all the squares in the pieces array. So thanks very much for listening. Comments, questions, criticisms, welcome as always on YouTube.